Hi, I'm Paul Brody. I'm usually the fabricator here, but not today. Today I'm the assembler. I'm gonna work on the Tiger Cub motor. Mitch behind the camera. Look what showed up. It's the Hope Rota 155 millimeters for the 69er. So all you people that wrote in and said, oh, I got a Rota somewhere, I can send it to you. I got one, so thank you very much for offering to help. Okay, so what has happened since last time? Since last time, I put in a cotter pin here and there's a felt washer that needs to go over the gear change spindle. So I went to eBay and I found one for 99 cents US and the shipping was 550 and I thought, okay, I can handle that. So I committed to buy, I clicked and as soon as I committed to buy, the shipping went up to $15.85. Yes, I live in Canada. Yes, the felt washer was in the US, but I've never had that happen before. The shipping is the shipping. So that order is out there in cyberspace somewhere because I'm not going to pay 16 times the price of the item for shipping. Also last night, I realized that I'm missing a part. This is the clutch rod. It comes through here. This is the lever, and I realized because I was looking at the end, there's a little indent. There's a ball bearing that goes in there, and it's a 5 30 seconds ball bearing, odd size, which is 0.156 thou. I don't have that, so anyway, we can assemble, and I'll just have to take off the case and we'll put the little ball. That's how the clutch works. When you when I pull the clutch lever, the cable goes in here, and that's the action. What we're going to do now is to is to put on the the spring here. This is the is the kickstart return spring. There's a cover here. See, I got a, a brand new cork gasket. And that's gonna go like that. So we'll put that on now. And then we'll work on the other side. There's an oil seal inside there that has to fit over. So I'm gonna take off the cover here. See this nut? It's not tight. Now, I, I was doing other things on the motor and I showed you how this works with the wrist pin and that, that'll hold it, but I can't, I can't use that because this is not connected with, with this. So this just spins and this just spins. Those aren't connected with the primary chain. So what I did is I made, I took a piece of metal this is going to fit like that. And you can also see from the back here, can, can you see how the gear comes down and holds that? So I'm going to rest this against the case and then I can torque it. I think that'll be fine. I'm going to use my Loctites and we're going to install the door. Okay. See there's a little uh, a keyway there. Got to put a key in. So we're looking for a eighth inch key. I got four keys. They're all the wrong size. I know I have. I know I had the right one. I put it in a plastic bag, but 
Look what Mitch just found. It's a little ball bearing. 156. That's a 532nds inch ball bearing. So that's going to work on the clutch. Thank you, Mitch. And he also found... See, I knew I had them. It was marked clutch. These are the... These are the keys. I think it's called a wood rough key. Someone will correct me if I'm wrong. I know it. We'll see if the clutch hub fits over there. Well, that seems to fit pretty well. Got to engage the splines there. There we go. Okay, we got clutch plates to go on now. So we put a steel one on next because the cork is in there. See that? In there is a friction. It's really, really thin. I got this used. I think I got it from Roy. I'm told that I'll be taking this apart again. That's how these clutches are, apparently. Hmm, that's interesting why that doesn't want to go down there. I wonder if I'm mixing clutch plates. Okay, let's do this. We'll, we'll measure here. So it's 56 thou bigger. So of course it won't fit because this is a different size. I'll just have a quick check, see if I got, got more secret stash, maybe. <clears throat> Aha, okay. <clears throat> let's, let's see what we got here. Yeah, sometimes it's handy having extra motors and parts around. Let's just see if these will fit in there. Aha! Uh -huh. Apparently this goes one way like that. So what I have to do now <clears throat> is to put the nut on there. You need space because these hexes hit those three exposed tubes. So I made up a special washer. And we'll put some, I think we'll use blue Loctite on this. Seeing as how I'm told that I'm going to be taking it apart for sure. Oh. Okay, hold on. So when I go to torque this down, it spins because I don't have a, a pressure plate on here with the springs. Okay, that's what I need to do. I need to make a special tool out of a clutch plate. So we're gonna have to do some TIG welding and I have to weld a handle onto this. So let me find some kind of a piece of metal. That's going to get welded on a special tool coming up. We have a tool. So that fits on very nicely and then it, it hits against this shaft and then we can torque it. Okay, that's about 30 pounds. And now I have a special tool. We have clutch springs. So this is the tensioner now. 
for the chain. This is something that got made up here in the shop. And then it's a little bit tight. like it's going in better. So last time we had an issue this wasn't quite in the middle but we got the flywheel all straightened up so hopefully we're good there. So we hold it okay. I've got new studs, we're going to put these in now, put a little bit of Loctite on the bottom. So I use two bolts on the top, I lock them, I lock them together. And that's how I, I torque them down. Okay, so this is the last one. There we go. I honed out the barrel. We did a video on that and that seemed to work pretty good. There is four thou play there. So I think that should be good. What, I'm, what I need to do now, okay, the piston came like this in a box and I have to take off the rings and put the rings in there and check for eight thou end gap. There needs to be a space there. And if the gap is less, I need to file. So this is kind of a tricky job because if you break a ring, that's a problem. So you gotta have some thumbnails. There we go. Okay, so that's the top ring. I'm going to keep them all in order here. We've got the top ring, we've got the second ring, and we have the oil ring. This is old style. This is a one-piece oil ring. This one's harder to get off. So that... Okay. This is one-piece oil ring. Okay, so let's do the oil ring first. Well, it goes in there. All right, if it fits in there, that's good. That's just, that just fits in there. Okay, that one's good. And this is the top ring. You wanna make sure they're level, not just at an angle. You get a false reading. There we go, eight thou goes in there, so that's good. So I'm going to put a little bit of oil. I don't like, I was shown years ago, you, you smother it with oil. Well, I don't, I don't know if I subscribe to that anymore. I think you need a little bit of oil, but I don't think you need to smother it. So here we go. There's a ring gap. So then this ring gap is over here. And then this ring gap will come, we'll put it right there right there. So we got one, two, and three. So they're all staggered. So I'm going to put a little bit of oil inside the barrel, just a little bit. I don't, don't need too much. Okay, the rings are in. Oops. Okay, there it is. So that's in. 
So I'm going to put a little bit of gasket goo on here. This, this holds the gasket in place. Okay, so the piston is held. Okay, I'm heating up the piston so that the, the wrist pin is gonna fall in. We really do not want anything to fall down into the crankcase. That would be pretty bad. So that circlip is in. Can you see that? It's all the way in. You, you, you do have to check all the way around, make sure that it's not, because if a circlip comes loose, that's never good. Okay, so this is the barrel on. Going over the piston. There we go. So, we have a piston going up and down. Look at that. Next is cylinder head. So we'll put it on the other stroke where the push rods are both level. There you go. That's, that's compression stroke. We're gonna work on the head gasket and the washers now. We're gonna anneal them. This is the head gasket and the copper washers and, and copper over time, it just naturally hardens up, ages. So we, we're gonna heat it up so it's red hot and dunk it into cold water. That makes it soft. We're looking for a little bit of red here. Just a little bit, oh, there's some red. Not the other two, there we go. Annealed, that's it. On the head gasket, I got two hooks because I found out earlier that if you just use one hook and then you put the flame on it, it spins around. So this way with the two hooks, see it doesn't spin. So we'll just get some nice red here and then we'll call it annealed. You can see the color changing. Calling that red. Okay. See, you can see all the, all the freshness of the, the copper, especially on this side. Next is assembling the cylinder head. I have all the parts here, so why not? Why don't we do that? I've got a valve valve spring compressor that I made. Do intake valve first. You always want to lube up the valve stem. All the seats are cut. New guides. So this is what the springs rest on. Inner spring, outer spring, valve cap. I used to do this when I worked in a machine shop years ago. I was the kid who did all the valve jobs and the grinding and all that, so I have a little bit of experience. Can you see down there? That's where the keepers go. It's almost like I need a pair of tweezers. Okay, that's one. Usually they go a little easier than that. Okay, I might get some pliers. Oh, no, there we go. Okay. A trick I was taught when you want to help it to seat, you take a plastic hammer or something like that. That helps to keep it a seat. 
This is the exhaust valve. They're both new, the valves. There we go, popped in. What's next is the rocker arms. Mitch is gonna show you a photo of what these used to look like. I polished these up, so they're looking a lot better than what they used to, because they were kind of crude with all the casting marks on there. So these are the rocker shafts. Those are the acorn nuts that got made. Remember that video? Out of stainless steel. I bought a couple gasket sets and they were supposed to come with these O-rings. These go in like so. And then the O-ring has to seal, but, but the gasket kits didn't have O-rings. So I found these in my O-ring kits. There we go. That shim goes like that. Ooh. Okay, so that's how the rocker works. Now we have to see if the O-ring is going to want to slide in. What it, oh, I see. What it did, it, it sheared off a little bit of the O-ring. It, it took the excess off, so we're just going to leave it. I, I bought two gasket sets and they neither one had the proper o-rings in it so There we go. Okay, next next one. Well, the same thing again. We got most of the O-ring in there, but there's just a little sliver that comes off. So we'll find out if that's gonna work. Now, I'm told this is hard to do. I'm told that I'm gonna have a lot of fun and games with this. This, okay, there's the tappets. This is the exhaust. This is the intake. Okay, so that's how they go. And to keep these in line with each other so that it fits into the rock arms, I'm told that's really kind of tricky. So, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a red felt pen and I'm gonna mark this. I'm gonna mark this around the top. So I know that this one is gonna be exhaust. So if I get confused and I can't see what's going on, because everything gets hidden inside the pushrod tube. There's a, a, a black O-ring there. And this one's kind of an off-white. That's how that goes like that. So when, when the push rods are in there, you can't see what's going on. And I remember doing this when I was 15 because I took the head off. And I think I ended up making a piece of cardboard, a, a, a disc with two holes in it, that would hold the push rods. I think that's what I did back then, which wasn't really right. And I've heard of other people using screwdrivers and elastic bands and all sorts of stuff. So we're gonna see how successful we are here. So here's the head gasket annealed. The head gasket goes on like that. Oh, we need a push rod tube. Is that it? So we hold these up and we press down. This, this looks like it's centered and but it does look like the push rod tube is too long. So I'm not sure what to do about that. Apparently we are held up here because my my pushrod tube, that's this piece here, and I have I have a couple of them that are identical. It's too long, so it's got a seal, uh, a rubber seal on the top and the bottom, 
And can you see in here, there's a big gap. That needs to come down quite a bit. So that's, I can't assemble the head in the final position because the tube is too long. So we're gonna do that next time. Sorry about that. But we'll machine a tube and get it all set up and set the valve clearances and all that. Thanks for hanging out in the shop. Mitch and I like coffees. If you've enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe. We'll see you in a few days time. Take care.